You say that striving for physical health and longevity, but ignoring emotional health, could be the ultimate curse of all. What do you mean by that? Well, um, you know, there's a there's a there's this Greek mythology of a, a fellow I write about in the book, Tithonus, who who requests of the gods uh, immortality, and he gets granted eternal life, but not eternal health, and so he has this horrible curse where he's alive but he's physically decaying all the way into this decrepit, never-ending state. And so I think an extension of that is, well, if your if you're, um, emotional health, which encompasses many things, happiness, the quality of your relationships, any sense of purpose, any sense of happiness, if that is in a bad place, why would you want to live longer? I mean, you, you're, you're objectively suffering, so why would extending that suffering be of any value? Um, and again, like you can, th you can play sort of thought experiments all day long. So uh, let's, let's play one. So, um, you know, the little bit I know of you, Chris, you enjoy people, right? Like you're not an antisocial human being. So if I told you, um, Chris, whatever number you think is the dollar amount that it's going to take to make you happy, we're going to double it. Okay. That's how much money you've got. And whatever metric of your own physical health defined by how big your muscles are, how low your body fat is, how well you can perform. Let's give it to you plus 20%. Sounds good so far. Yep. And um, the only catch is you're the only person on the planet now. Now, don't worry. I've created a bunch of bots that will do everything. So your standard of living won't go down. Like you're going to have bots that will do anything and they'll provide your food and everything. How, how happy is your life? Like how long until you kill yourself? <laughs> Not long. No, because think about it. Like, what are you doing? Right? So that just gives you one example of, wow, if you took away my ability to interact with other people, I, their, life is not worth living. Very, very few people I could imagine could tolerate that for a long period of time. Um, so sure, that's extreme, but it's a great way to illustrate a point, which is if you have every single thing imaginable, but you have no connection to other people, what do you have? Um, so, of course, it doesn't have to be that extreme for the point to still remain. One of the things that I've been thinking about a lot recently is uh, integrating of emotions, because a lot of us that come from a productivity background or a biohacking background or a strength and fitness background, we try to reduce the human experience down to metrics and numbers and reps and sets and stuff like that. But the actual phenomenological experience of being a human is emotions. It's what what does what is the texture of your mind as you move day to day through the things. When you look back at the day, sure, you might be able to say how many words you wrote or how much weight you lifted or how far you ran. But the actual moment to moment experience of that isn't you logging things on a spreadsheet. It's how your mind feels. What, what What's going on internally? And I really think that that point about emotional health being everything else kind of being subjugate to that is really true. And it's something that I think people gloss over. So when when you conceptualize emotional health, what are you, what are you talking, how do you think about the component parts of emotional health or an emotional health regime? You know, some of it depends on definitions and semantics, and I don't for a second suggest that the way I do it is the right way or anything like that. The, the way we talk about it with our patients, because we do, um, because it fits into a hierarchy of all the things we care about managing in terms of longevity risk. So longevity risk is anything that is a threat to the length of your life or the quality of your life. And this has to be one of those buckets. Broadly speaking, there are seven. So within this bucket, I would say it's a um, sense of purpose, satisfaction and joy, achievement, quality of relationships, self-regulation, distress tolerance, Th those are probably the biggest buckets that fit into that. Um, and again, you know, Arthur Brooks, who I don't know, have you had Arthur on the podcast? He's coming on in a couple of months. Oh, yeah. So you'll have a great time with Arthur because this is really a big part of what he talks about is the subset of this around happiness. Um, and uh, I think he I think he has a very elegant way of, of thinking about happiness, right? Which is that happiness is not a feeling any more than the odor of the food you're consuming is the caloric 
macronutrient benefit of the food. Uh, and, and therefore, people tend to get a little bent out of shape if they don't, quote unquote, feel happy in a sort of positive valence emotional sense. Um, and I, I think that's actually one of the most important things I've learned in the last couple of years is that I shouldn't confuse my feelings with my state of happiness. And that, that when, I, when I'm evaluating the, my emotional state through the lens of happiness, I really want to go through these, these more nuanced metrics around like, am I, am I living in a manner that is congruent with what I believe my purpose is? My purpose, first and foremost, as a father and husband, but then second, my, my, my purpose as a doctor, and then maybe my purpose as a public figure, but, but I feel like I do have a purpose and all those things. Okay, and then, like, what is the state of my relationships? Wh where are my relationships good? Where are my relations under strain? Where are my relationships lacking in my attention? Um, and then, what am I pursuing that is giving me uh, a, a, a sense of satisfaction, which, which really requires um, doing something hard and achieving a result. Like, and I, you know, some people are more wired to need that than others. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably are, I know I certainly am, and my entire life has been built kind of around hard things to do as little, you know, side projects, you know, physical challenges sometimes, sometimes business challenges, writing a book, something like that, where you toil and it's hard, but at the end there's something you're you're proud of. So anyway, it's 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 about accounting through all of those things. Um, and I, I look for some people it's easier than others. There's some people that just naturally tend to find ease within those things and others who don't just as there are some people for whom it's much easier to do cardio and they enjoy it and there's others who maybe gravitate more towards strength training or maybe others who don't want to exercise at all as their natural default state